not only about God, God. it is God. God. I believe believe he is is. who he says he is. is. I believe believe he can do do what he says he can do. do. I believe believe I am am who he says I am. I believe I I have have what he says I have. have. I believe I I can do do what he says says I can. I I have been been created created in the image of God. God. As God is, is, so am I. I. Because Christ Christ lives in me. me. I'm more than a conqueror. conqueror. His word word is alive. And powerful, powerful, full of faith, faith, changing me as I speak. I I hear the word in faith today. I I act on the word of faith today. I I speak the word of faith today. today. And watch watch my life change. In Jesus' name. name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and be seated in the presence of the Lord and open your Bibles to the book of Joshua. We're going to open our Bibles to the book of Joshua. Amen. 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 Are we? Okay. Joshua, first chapter. We're going to begin reading verses 1 through 9. This is the uh, part 3 of the message, Be Unmovable. We're really going to be dealing with faith because you're going to have to live by faith. And... In this hour, you're not going to be able to live by my faith. You're not going to be able to live by somebody else's faith. And you're going to have to be able to live by your own faith. So one of the things that you're going to have to understand is that you have a personal relationship with God. And the enemy's job is to try to prevent you from having that relationship with God. So we're going to talk about being unmovable. If I were to think of a subtitle today, I want to think of the subtitle, I'll Never Leave You. Beginning to read in the first chapter. It says, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon <clears throat> that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river and the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Let's say that together. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Mm. Then he says, be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Say prosper. Prosper. Wherever I go. Wherever I go. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, say then, Amen. thou shalt make thy way. Pro- oh, wait a minute, God. I thought you was going to do this. I said, thou shalt make thy way. Pro- Let's read verse eight again. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Say good success. Good success. Ah, there is a bad success if there is a good success. Let's read this last verse 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee 
whether so ever thou goest, whether so ever thou goest. Let's get our other text scripture and then we'll go ahead and break down and exegete the text. Go to the book of John, the 14th chapter. John, the 14th chapter. 14th chapter of the book of John. We're going to start reading, uh, I believe, at the 15th verse, yes. John 15, when you have it, say we have it. Oh, it's on the screen. It says, if ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Mm, this is very powerful. This is a very strong revelatory statement that's being made. Listen to this. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be where? In, In you. you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Hmm. That's very powerful. I will not leave you comfortless. Okay. Jesus just, the father said, I will not leave you, but I will be with you. Okay. Jesus is saying this again. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, because I live, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day, ye shall know that I am in my father and ye in me and I in you. Mm. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. We're gonna deal with the subtitle, I'll never leave you. Father in Jesus name, put your word in a place that we each can grab it Taste it and see how good it is. Help your servant now, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The reason that we picked these two chapters, those of you that may not have the revelation of both chapters, in both of those chapters, what was actually taking place is that whether it was the children of Israel or whether it was Jesus getting ready to instruct the disciples, he was telling them that I am about to release you into a new destiny. Say a new destiny. When he begins to talk to Joshua, he tells Joshua, it's very important that you understand everything Moses did, everything that happened, it is set for you now. But I need you to understand, don't look to Moses no more. Moses is dead. And as I was with Moses, I'll be with you. But I need you to get ready to go forward. And where I'm taking you, I've already positioned you to have what you need to have, but you have something you have to do. I, I, I'm not going to leave you. The Almighty and the Most High is going to be with you. Jehovah Shammah, he that is present. I'll be present with you, but I need you to have a mindset to understand how I created you. And I need you to understand as long as you walk this earth. Yeah. Know that I'm not going to leave you and I'm not going to forsake you. But at the same time, know everything I put in my book, I need you to meditate on it. That is a Hebrew word, which means to regurgitate it. That means to just mummer it. That means that in the morning when I wake up, I say today is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I wake up this morning and say no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I wake up and say greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. Because when I say that, that's when God can step in on your picture. But if I say something else and I curse him in the morning, his angels don't move on your behalf. He don't step in on your behalf. It's not that he forsook you, but you forgot the instruction in the book. Meditate on my word. That means to regurgitate the word, to mummer the word. You, the, the devil wants to take the word from you and put you first in the morning. You wake up in the morning, my back hurt. Don't, we ain't worried about your back. You got a back. <laughs> We're not worried about your headache right now. Give God glory that you awake today. Some folk are dead. Some folk are in caves. Some are in bondage. Wake up and say thank you today. Give God some glory when you wake up. Learn that your mouth has power in it. Learn that you need to get up in the morning and make sure courage comes out of your mouth. He says, have not I commanded you? 
When Jesus get, we get all the way over to the point where Jesus is telling them about the Holy Spirit, he says, keep my commandments. In other words, my instructions. Stop looking at this stuff with all this, these movies you done seen. And you watch these movies and you get these movies in because they're stillers of faith. And it's very powerful that you begin to understand that your mouth has so much power. Your mouth has power. Have you ever noticed how the devil always tries to take your mouth? Huh? Every situation comes up, the first thing he do is try to tell you, cuss him out, do this, do that. that. He's always trying to take your mouth. You know, always trying to use your hands and violence and stuff. See, that's because you're not spending enough time in the presence of God. You need to take time out. And when I say time in the presence of God, nobody's asking you to be some religious zealot. I'm telling you, just learn how to go and love some people. Learn how to say kind things. Learn how to turn worship music on. You know, you say, well, I ain't one of them real serious person. But that don't mean you go turn on the music and cuss the Holy Spirit out all day. I mean, the Holy Spirit don't want to hear all that stuff, who you shooting and who's this and cussing everybody out. That ain't the Holy Spirit's music. Oh, well, Pastor, you too religious. I'm just trying to give you the point. Holy Spirit is not with that program cussing him out. Amen. All right. So if you think he is, you got a problem. So I can't <laughs> preach that to you. I'm sorry. He is not with you getting cussing him out every morning. He's just not with that program. He's not with you cussing women out all day. Now, if you turn on music and they calling every woman a B and a this and a that, he's not with that because he created her as a woman in his own image to be blessed and anointed. He don't want you calling her a B. You don't call what I created a B. What makes you think that? I called him a B because it was a dog. She is a woman made in my image. Mm. You don't have a right to talk about who I created. Don't get, don't get into enjoying music like that. Oh, he's a real good brother. He ain't no real good brother. He works for the devil, and he works in the devil's kingdom, and the devil's kingdom is large. And just because you see money don't mean it's God's kingdom. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You got to preach the truth nowadays. You got to tell people what the real word is. Now. When you get in this book of John, this is very important because he is speaking into destiny what they could not see then. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about, Pastor? In the book of Revelations, there is a scripture that says when the two disciples or the two apostles, the last two that come, and it's going to be Elijah and Enoch who did not die. They have to die in Israel. And ever since... The Bible was given since the first century as they begin to write it. And ever since then, they said, this has got to be a flaw because it says everybody will know within an hour that they died. Mm -hmm. That does not sound right. How will they know within an hour? But it don't, that, that's not a surprise to you, is it? Because you got a cell phone and it's a satellite that can get information to you within 30 seconds. But if you would have read that a long time ago, you would have thought it was a lie because you could not figure out how could everybody know within an hour in Israel that they were killed. How you gonna know in an hour? How? It, it, it didn't make sense, did it? It didn't even make sense 35 years ago because they didn't have a cell phone that could let everything happen. 60 years ago, they had to have a, uh, what is that, Morse code. So that just goes to tell you. So when Jesus says this, this is the revelation of the word that you have to get for yourself. And that's why it's so important that you have teachers teach you things and show you as they walk with God. I didn't even see this before, but he says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. You know what Jesus is telling us there? They're going to be operating by sight. Mm. That's how you know how the world is moving. They operate by sight. He's telling you that they're going to go by what they see. They're going to move by what they see. So he's telling you right now, long years ago, 2,000 plus years ago, that the world's not going to be able to know who I am because they're going to be operating by what they see. Mm -hmm. So it makes it real plain when he says, walk by faith and not by sight, because he says, I need you to walk in another dimension. I don't need you walking in a dimension about what they say. I need you to be walking in something from the inside because when I saved you, I put faith in you. You are saved by faith. You're saved by grace 
through faith. In other words, when it says by, that means that I flew to New Jersey by plane, but I went through there. My God. You understand? So you might go by. So when you heard him reading there, by faith, through faith, by faith, through faith, by faith is the mechanism that I have to use. What would you do? I'm standing on faith. I'm going to get this thing accomplished by faith. Well, what you going to go through? I don't know. I might go through the state. I might go through the governor. I might go through the lottery, but I'm going. <laughs> don't go through the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> but you might. You might. Somebody might. I mean, it happens. I mean, I've seen Christian people get dreams and stuff and they get numbers and they be Christians. I don't know where they got them from, but they said God gave it to them. <laughs> Amen. So I don't know what God's going to give you. If he wake you up, remember, bring your tithe. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it can happen. I don't know how God, when God wants to get it to you, he'll get it to you. Amen. He will get it to you. Now, listen, that means that we as believers have to deal with what Jesus said. Now look at the instruction that he gave us. He said, they're not going to be able to understand. He says, because it seeth him not. It says, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth in you and shall be in you. Now we just confess. I believe I am who he says I am. I believe I have what he says I have. So if he says I have the Holy Spirit, why are you running around here letting the devil tell you every day he's not really in you and that old stupid stuff he comes up with? Oh, God's not real. He's not in you. He ain't telling you nothing. He don't even talk to you. Look what he let happen to you. You sit right there and entertain the devil. And so, but you just got through confessing, I believe what you said. So now if you're going to believe it, start believing the Holy Spirit is in you and start honoring him as a guest in your life. You know, when you start honoring somebody as a guest in your life, if somebody told you right now, they just called up and said, Michelle Obama found your name on the Internet and she picked you out and she wants to come to your house. You get ready to go right there, clean up everything the best you can. Now, you can do about it. You got to live where you live. She's going to come where she come. But I guarantee you're going to go home and fix it up. Are you or are you not? <laughs> are, are you not? You're going to talk to every kid. Now, don't you say nothing. Now, don't you say nothing. Now, you act like this and you act like this and you better not move. You're going to have them all. You're going to have everything in place because you're ready to receive somebody that you respect. That's how you want to respect the Holy Spirit. Understand. Because, see, if Michelle Obama comes, your life is going to change when she leaves. If I call you and tell you Oprah Winfrey got an invitation for you, your life's about to change. When the Holy Spirit comes and you yield to him, your life's about to change. Because everything God talks about is forward. He ain't telling you. He, what did he say? He said, do everything in this world so you can have good success. So everything that you do will prosper. Prosperity is always on God's mind. Anybody tell you God wants you poor, they don't know the God that you serve. Because from the day he created you, he blessed you and empowered you to prosper. And if he blessed you and empowered you to prosper, that means that prosperity is a part of your spiritual DNA. You wake up knowing I'm blessed. You got to wake up believing this. You don't listen to the TV. If you turn on the TV, you'll think the Kardashians are blessed. You, you'll call that the blessing. You'll say that the, that's the blessing. And you won't even know that that ain't necessarily the blessing. They're just enjoying some of the rich dainties of the world. It's all kind of people. Hitler enjoyed them. So was he blessed? I mean, it's all kind of people enjoy the, the dainties of the world. But do they have the peace? Do they have peace inside of what they're doing? All right. Or are they running around getting an injection here, an injection there, an injection there, an injection there? I got seen something on the news. They had Photoshop and they left one kneecap off and this and that. No, that. that ain't even who they are. And you running around here following them. Amen. What for? Hey, man, say Jesus. Jesus. Let's get to this word. Let's go just a little bit further. I want to look at this part. Yet a little while and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. Say, Jesus said, Jesus said the, enemy the enemy came to kill, came to kill steal, steal, and destroy. And destroy. But, I but I came that ye might, that ye might have, life have life and life, and life more, abundantly. more abundantly. So he says that even though the world don't recognize me, your life is connected to my abundance. You shall live regardless. So they don't have no power over your life and your destiny. None at all. They don't have. The world cannot determine that. Do you know how the world can determine they have power over your destiny? Only one way you can do that. You have to accept it. You have to accept 
that they are an authority in your life. That's the only way they can do it. They can't do it no other way. You have to believe what they tell you. You have to believe that they can destroy your life. The minute you recognize that your destiny and your future is in the hands of the Holy Spirit that Jesus gave you, and he said, I will manifest myself to you. I will come to you. Jesus, when, when they got ready to go to any challenge, God always steps up in the beginning. I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. You know what you tell your kids when, you, when they go out the door? I love you. If you need me, you call me. I will be there. Do you know most of you have learned your life that whenever you call your parent, they're coming? What more of the God that created you? You know, you got an awesome, you've been created awesome. Don't let nobody tell you you came from no animal. You know, have you ever woke up and said heartbeat today? Have you ever woke up and said I see today? Have you ever woke up and said organs work today? You, you never had to say that. You never had to talk to your organs or nothing. And how, how long you been living, brother? 56 years. 56 years? You ain't had to tell your heart to beat? Nope. You ain't had to tell your eyes to see? No. They just did. The doctor didn't tell them to see. They didn't call you in the morning and program it in you? <laughs> did they call and program your ears? No. Your fingers? No. What about all the information you learned over life? Did they tell you you could use it today or was it already available, automatic? It was already. Already available. So if you learned how to fly a plane, they ain't got no control over you still flying the plane. So if you get the information in, they can't take it out. Okay, God, that's good. That's really important because some of you don't know your education and what you take time to learn and acquire. The devil don't have power to tell you. Don't let him tell you because whatever God puts in, he cannot download it. Amen. Now, he can disrupt it. He can go give you a drug. He can get you on something that you ain't got no business taking. But if you're walking with God, Jesus will let you know, no, 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 no. Wrong friend. Wrong people. Wrong direction. Wrong place. And you need to start paying attention in this hour because I'm telling you, the other thing in, in evangelistic TV now is they're expecting a financial wealth revival for the body of Christ. Now, if you don't want to believe it, that's your fault. I want to believe it because he said before the end of time, the wealth of the sinner will be transferred to the just. The just are those that are in Christ Jesus. You need to position first your mind. You got to position your mind. When you go get a job, you just get up in the morning and go down there, don't brush your teeth and everything, or do you get yourself ready? You get yourself ready? Do you, do you find out everything you have on your resume? You figure out all that stuff? How you gonna answer them questions and stuff? You get your mind ready and prepared, right? And you know what they ask you when you go on these interviews, if you got any, a real interview, because some of them, you, when, when you're just starting off in life, you don't even get a chance, they don't ask you these kind of questions. They just tell you the job pays $9 an hour, you want it or not. But at some of these other ones, they said, well, what were you expecting for your salary with your gifts and your talents? So you got to have it in your mind. You can't go up there talking about, well, whatever you want to pay me, good. I'll pay you nothing. <laughs> good. Whatever, I want to pay you nothing. Can I get it for nothing? Yeah, because if you don't know your self-worth, then they don't know your self-worth. You don't know what you're worth. And if you say you're worth too little, I know I'm not going to be able to use you because I need somebody to know what they're worth. You got to know what you're worth in this hour. So that's why you need to know that you are who he says you are, because you'll start letting outside people tell you who you are. Let's get in this word before I get too far. What time is it? Ten o'clock. I don't have much time. OK, we're going to get some things done, though. Ye shall know, shall experience my love. Say knowing, knowing. and experiencing, experiencing are two different things. <laughs> but Jesus said in verse 20 and 21, not only shall you know, but you shall experience my love. We will manifest. You know, have you ever heard people say, I love you, and then you find out that they didn't even show up to the meeting? Mm. Have you ever had that happen? If you love me, you got to, I got to be able to experience your love. How are you going to love me, and every time I call, you're not there? You don't love me. <laughs> you can save the text. Because <laughs> you're not experiencing it. You understand? So Jesus says, I'm going to manifest my love. That means you're going to get a chance to experience my love. How many of you have got a chance to experience God's love in your life? I mean, to experience him showing up. You know, and you know, when God starts, ex starts releasing love in your life, say people start coming. See, people start coming because it's kind of hard just to look at the, the trees and stuff. Oh, you love me, God. You love me. You love me. You love me. God will send somebody in there and give you a holy handshake. He'll send somebody say, I'm going to pay a bill. He'll send somebody and show you how I love you because I want to take that stress of that bill off of you that the devil's trying to put on you and you're worried. So I'm going to send somebody to be a blessing in your life. 
And I've seen different seasons of my life as I've walked with God. He put things together and put blessings in my life. People that you could never dream of that the average person would meet. But because you were walking in faith, he said, I got this covered. Keep walking. And you'll see people when you start walking in faith. One of the things you're going to really know when you're walking in faith, you're going to meet people in high places. Don't get rid of their connection because that connection is for where you're going, not where you're at. But he's already positioning you because you ain't going to have time to find them. And it's very powerful. And you'll be very, very surprised. I was checking on some business for somebody else. And they connected me with a guy that owned a mortgage company in Long Beach a year and a half ago. And it was over something concerning uh, some people that did a fraudulent document over my uncle's property. And they had taken it. Long story short, we were in probate over it. But this particular guy connected me to another lawyer that handled that business, but he didn't have nothing to do with it, but just gave me the title, the chain of title and everything. Lo and behold, when the time came that something happened in my own personal life with my own mother and I had to go get him more, he said, I'm a specialist. I got you covered. God already had him in place. I didn't even know I would need him because I, I ain't been in California using a lot of specialties. He said, oh no, I own the company. That's my specialty. Boom. <laughs> See, God already had a person in position, already had a person in position in advance. So you don't have to wonder if he got this handle. What do you do? Walk in faith. Amen. He's already positioned it. So now if he didn't position, you'll be running around calling everybody. What about this? What about this? What about that? I already got it. I was ahead of the game. I got well qualified people capable of doing what I brought in your life at this time. And you walk in faith. And the longer you walk in faith, you'll start seeing more things lined up like that in faith. You'll have favor in bigger places. Things will begin to come together. That's what it means by walking by faith. My God, let's wrap up. Let's go to Hebrews, the 13th chapter. All right. This is our last scripture today. Somebody say, I'm going to walk by faith, not by sight. And when you walk by faith, now remember this. Faith is always activated by your words. That's why he said, meditate on this word. Do you remember the woman with the issue of blood? Yes. The Bible says that she said to herself, if I but touch the hem of his garment. I will be made pray. See that whole confession of faith? Mm -hmm. She said, she didn't say I'm going to be healed if I think about it. She said, if I touch, I'll be made whole. And she touched. And because she understood the power of great faith, the Bible says Jesus turned around and said, somebody touched me. And Peter said, who? All these people. No, 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 no. Somebody touched me with faith. And I had to release what they commanded of me because they moved in faith and it's a law that they touched me with. They touched me in faith. But she didn't just say if I touch him, something going to happen. She said if I touch him, I'll be made whole. I'll be healed. So she made her confession in power. So she went all the way to Joshua. As long as you meditate, regurgitate my word, I'll make your way prosperous. I'm going to get you through the crowd. And when you touch him, you're going to have good success. Hey, shum did it in the old side. So faith has to be released out of your mouth. And then it has works that follow it. Somebody say, I got to put the works to it. Got to put the works to it. If she'd have stayed at home and confessed it, she wouldn't have got healed. But God made her way prosperous. Because how did you get through all of those people that also was next to him? But you had a confession in place. And God's word says, his angels that excel in strength, that they grow in strength and they hearken to the voice of his word. When she released that confession about Jesus, whew, the wave opened for her. Mm -hmm. Boom. And he said, your faith made you whole. So now you see how faith works. I got to begin to say more in the morning. You got to start confessing faith and standing on it. Every day, every day, make a confession. Say, make sure you say I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Make sure you say that. What time we have? Five after. Okay. You're good. I got up here a little late today. 13th chapter of the book of Hebrews. Okay. I put this in the Amplified for you. Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember those, anybody remember the show Touched by an Angel? Mm-hmm. 
This here scripture say you need to be, watch how you treat people that you're giving hospitality to. Remember those who are in prison as though in prison with them. When they're in prison, think you might be with them. And those who are mistreated, since you also are in the body. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled. For God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. He didn't say he's going to give you to hell, but you will get a consequence from it. Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. See, don't get yourself falling in love with money. So when you hear people talking about I love money, run from them. You might like what money can do for you, but love life, not money, because money does not make a life. A life is more than money. People who love money ruin their lives. Because they fall in love with the strength of the money instead of the strength of the God. Because we may have to leave America and you may not be able to use the American currency. But that don't mean God won't give you 10 goats. Right. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Because wealth is transferred on every continent differently. Mm -hmm. They're making new coins right now. They got stuff called Bitcoin, this coin, that coin, and this money. They got something called the stock market. They ain't nothing but all paper money. Mm -hmm. They got all type of ways that people transfer large amounts of money. So when you line up with money, you line up with something that is limited in scope and does not have the power of the entire universe that God has put on wealth. That, he didn't say, I'll give you money. I'll give, I'll give you power to get wealth. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't call it money. He says wealth and riches shall be in your house. Wealth riches and wealth. Wealth is a mindset. Wealth is a mindset. The Bible declares in the book of Proverbs that the rich man's wealth is a strong city and the destruction of the poor is their poverty. What is that? Poverty is a mindset. Poverty don't keep you poor because you wouldn't be down or else wouldn't be rich today. She grew up in projects. OK, uh, it, so poverty in and of itself don't keep you poor, but the mindset will keep you poor. Wealth in and of itself don't keep you strong, keep you rich. It says it's a strong city, his wealth, not his riches. So you've got to understand that it's in the mindset. So you want to have the mind of Christ in your life. Mm -hmm. That's the anointed one and his anointing in this hour. And this is what I wanted you to see in this part. People are going to have to quit thinking that you can use grace to sin. Going to have to quit doing that. Yeah, because they, they're teaching that there. They're teaching that their subject. I, I'm going to just, I'm going to veer off. She doesn't have the scripture. We're going to stay there. But they're teaching this subject that if you're in grace, you can do whatever you want to do. Okay. But when grace doesn't give you a license to sin and get all out here crazy, what grace does, it gives you power not to sin. It gives you power not to sin. In other words, I know who I am. I don't have to drop down to the lower level. Mm -hmm. I don't have to. Grace will give you the power not to sin. And just, I'm going to hold on one second. Just hold your Bibles there. Hold that on the screen still. Go to the book of Jude. I want to read this in your hearing real quick. And write it in your notes. First chapter of the book of Jude. It's not going to be on the screen. If you got your Bibles, write it in your notes. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. He always, everybody, mercy be multiplied, peace be multiplied, all is to you, be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you that I exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Say the faith. The faith. He said the saints had something where I want you to contend. I want you to be after that type of faith, the one that moves mountains, the one that closed mouths of lions. I want you to go for that faith. Stop contending for this weak stuff so you can sin. And then he says, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God. Mm. And the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's people who are going to tell you because you're in grace, you can be a homosexual. You can do this. You can do that. You can do whatever you want to do. No, all of that is sin. I didn't say, see, don't identify with it. Say I'm struggling with it. All right. All right. Because God didn't make you that way. He made you male and female. He didn't make you all confused and mixed up. 
over the progression of time and people doing all type of sin, it brought about a lot of struggle. You can struggle with homosexuality your whole life, but don't try to tell nobody that it's right because it's not right. Amen. It's a struggle that you won't do. If you want to go tell your kids, it's OK to do heroin. No, it's a struggle. It ain't OK to do heroin. Do you want to tell some uh, a married man it's OK to sleep out on your wife and the lie and deceive women and stuff? Do you want to tell him that? No, because it's not right. And he says it's not right. Keep yourself. So you got to understand in this hour, those that are going to live godly are going to have to have a standard. You're going to have to have a standard of godliness. You're not going to be able to just live over there somewhere and just do that. You're not going to be able to just blame it on grace. Well, I can do whatever I want because I'm in grace. No, you can't. Then it says. For God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. So sexually immorality, God's going to judge. Does that mean you're going to hell? No. If you save, you're still going to heaven because he doesn't reverse it because of a sexual sin. He covered all sin, sex and everything. But you get judged by it. What kind of judgment do you get? You get all kind of stuff. In some countries, they kill you. In some countries, they put you in jail. In some countries, they stone you. Some places, you pick up all kind of diseases and stuff that you have no idea of that change the whole course of your life forever. That gives you a stigma forever. I don't know what every judgment is. All I know is that mercy rejoices against judgment. And if you did fall in judgment, you can go get mercy. Amen. You can go boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to hell. That's for every believer, whether he is dealing with homosexuality, adultery, addiction or whatever he is dealing with. No difference. Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with that that you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. If I tell you that he moved in my life, if I tell you that when, 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 when I decided to get married and, and uh, flew back to uh, New Jersey to get married and uh, we had to move at that particular time and we had three kids, I had to go do some federal time and we had to move from there, from the projects, from a project apartment. But they never lived in one again after Papa V got there. <laughs> but I didn't get there by me, Papa V. I got there as the man of God. All right. They had to they had to wait it out. But God moved and moved things. And I had favor like you wouldn't believe. Walked out with favor. God put favor on your life and he'll put people in place. I had people come yes. up and moved into a three bedroom house with a garage and everything. And I hadn't even been out through months. And he said, you know what? Me and my wife going to sign for this for you, Pastor. I just feel good about you. And I never even met him before. Mm. Never even met him before. That's the kind of favor God will give you. And when you start walking by faith and he will release your past if you start speaking to your future. The devil's job is to always tell you that your past is going to dictate your future. Your past does not have the authority to dictate your future. I don't care how bad it is. But the thing is, when do you want to stop and start walking by faith and start walking in the word of God? Walking by faith is just walking by the word of God. And allowing the Holy Spirit to direct you. It don't mean you don't make mistakes. It don't mean you don't come short. All it means is that when you do come short, you have a high priest, the author and the finisher of your faith that is just and faithful to forgive you of every sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness and purge you of every iniquity. That means, and he says, if you say you don't have sin, you a liar. So if somebody get up here, I don't sin, I don't have no sin, he's just straight lying out of his mouth. <laughs> Just know he's a liar. Run from him because he lied in. He's going to lie something else. Amen. Because you're going to sin. And I used to think I was in a, in a place that I thought that you could live without sin. I thought that it was possible. But then as I read the Bible and began to read more and more, I read in the Bible where it says the thought of foolishness is sin. That one you can't get away from. That one you can't get away from. And, and, and then I found out what that meant. The thought of foolishness. That means that when you was having a tough day and somebody jumped in front of you and you wish you had a truck that you could run them into the tree. Yeah, that was sin. 
Yeah, you, you know, how, how many of you ever wished that? You know, you wished it, yeah. You wished it, say, oh man. You know, what was, boy, if I wasn't in this car and I was in one of them old trucks, I'd just ram them right. Don't know, you don't know what they might have just came from, how they missed up and got in front of you. But when you learn how to walk with God, you learn how you don't know what they threw. I read in a book years ago, I'm coming in, read in a book years ago that there was a guy in a waiting room with three kids. And the kids were running all around, all over the place. The kids were running all over the place. And another guy said, sir, why don't you do something about your kids? They're all running all over the waiting room. You see them doing all this stuff, why don't you do something? And he was just sitting there and wasn't paying attention. And the guy said, this guy's not paying no attention to his kids. I need to straighten him out. So he went over there and told the guy, says, you know, your kids are getting pretty unruly here. Why don't you do something about them? And he said, you know, I guess I do. He said, we just got news that their mother just died. So I didn't even think about it, and I guess they're not thinking about it. And you know he wanted to just slap himself upside the head because he thought what the person was dealing with was above what he knew. Mm. That he could straighten somebody else's situation out, and you have no idea. So when that person runs right in front of you, you don't even know what they're coming through right that day. So don't want to run them into a tree. <laughs> you don't want to ram them into a tree. You want to just sit back. You don't know what they're dealing with. And they may not have the faith and the peace to deal with it the way you would. Somebody do stuff. Sometimes I've seen some guy. I was here first. I said, yes, you were, sir. Yes, you were. Yeah, you were. But he must have thought he wasn't. That's why he said it. <laughs> I mean, but I, yes, you were. No problem. No problem. OK, I just want to make sure. No, it ain't no problem. You're in line first. That will where you gonna get? You ever seen the ones go all around you in cars just to get up to the light? And when, when I was a younger Christian, I'd go up next to them and look over there at them and smile, you idiot. <laughs> but I grew past that. So then that's why I know the thought of foolishness. You know, they and just to be at the light. And I go right up next to them at the light. Sometimes I make a right to let them know I'm still going. You didn't get past me. <laughs> but anyway, praise God. Amen.